Hello YouTubers, April 25th, 2015. Well, yesterday was the 100th anniversary of the Armenian Holocaust. What's that, you might say? Well, 100 years ago, the Ottoman Empire was thriving in Europe, and the Turks decided to go after Christians. Armenia was 99% Christian. The Turks was about 20%. And uh, they passed a few resolutions here and there. Next thing you know, it was legal to have what we now call death marches, where they would round them up. Um, you see, the Christians had kicked the, the Muslims out of Europe. And they needed some place to go. So they just decided to take the Christians' homes, take their businesses, just take their stuff. And so they started rounding them up in the middle of the night. As a matter of fact, one leader said he was going to kill every woman and man and every child this high, and he pointed to his knee. And uh, when it was all said and done, two million Christians were dead. That was the first major holocaust of the century. It wasn't only 20 years later, Adolf Hitler actually said, you know, look how easily they forgot that. Matter of fact, not only did they forgive Turkey, but they allowed them to be a nation again, and to they, they esteemed them. Why can't I get by with it? And he killed 6 million Jews, and actually close to 60 million people. He was responsible for their deaths by the end of World War II. Could it happen again? Look around, folks. It is happening, and it's happening right now. Just this week, Jonathan Kahn goes before the UN, and he makes a plea. Uh, Ex-Governor Huckabee says that the United States is going to criminalize Christianity. We see uh, small businesses uh, being attacked because they don't want to uh, cater to same self, uh, self-sex. Um, <coughs> You know what? I can hardly say it. It's such an abomination. You know what I mean. <clears throat> I'm not going to throw the cliche out there. Love the sinner, hate the sinner, or the sin. Even though that's really what it boils down to if you're a child of God. <clears throat> I have a daughter. And uh, I love her dearly. Um... This is my wife's sister. We, we took her in when she was a small child, 10, maybe 11. And because she didn't have a, a, a home with a father, uh, which is what you'll find in the homosexual community 90% of the time, the, it was a broken home. She wore the blue jeans and the big belt buckles and the plaid shirts tucked in and, you know, typical little tomboy and... Anyway, we brought her in, and, you know, as the years went by, she would wear more feminine things, and, you know, my wife raised her as her own daughter, even though she was her sister, and when we all got born again, uh, she was around 18, and she saw there was a change in our life, she was watching, and it wasn't too long after before she accepted Christ as her Lord and Savior, married a man of God, had four children, what a prayer warrior she was, she fasted all the time, and Wow, what a prayer warrior. I, that's one of the things I remember about Angel. And uh, and she knows I, I can't stand the lifestyle today. But anyway, she, I'm jumping ahead of myself. Um, she was a nurse at a hospital. One of the nurses came in one night and um, decided to do free tarot card readings. And she went ahead and got involved in that. And just within 30 days, she had had a lesbian affair filed for divorce it's been 30 years now and uh I, I, she's been married to another woman once and maybe she still is i don't know i know she's not with her um it's been a lot of relationships in the last 30 years uh, with other women but uh anyway I, I love her so much but yet she'll refer to me as a hater because i don't condone the lifestyle and not me just particular, but just anyone who doesn't condone the lifestyle. And we've had a couple little blow-ups over the lifestyle and, uh, you know, how she can know the scriptures the way she does. Over a year ago, I put a video out about the danger of the gay-lesbian movement and where it was headed. 
right after California passed their uh, same-sex marriage uh, law. Uh, I went into some detail how back in the 60s, psychologists actually said it was mental illness. And they targeted them, they turned that around. Uh, this was one of the last uh, enemies that they had was our government. And here we are, weeks away from a Supreme Court ruling that could turn our nation into what I call a sodomite nation. And may God help us if that happens. But they do have their targets on one last, what they call their enemy, and that's the Christian faith, Christianity. We are in the crosshairs. Uh, night or two ago, I watched the Bruce Jennings interview. And like most of America, I'm sure, who were moved by his, his interview, he seemed like a very loving father. Um, but we remember Bruce back in 76 as athlete of athletes. I mean, it, it was reminiscent of the Joe Lewis uh, match back in World War II when uh, good was versing evil. And here we are, 76, the Soviet Union has, you know, their train from uh, early child man who they believe is man of men. And here comes Bruce Jennings. Or Bruce Jenner, excuse me, and you know he wins ten events. You know the javelin, the the shot put, the uh, I mean he he wins them all. I mean there was there was none like him. They call him the athlete of all athletes, and I'm sure most of you have seen uh, the interview the other night, and uh, it was disturbing. It was disturbing. It's 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 almost like watching one of those sitcoms, which of course he is pretty heavy into the reality TV thing, but one of the reasons I had to give that kind of stuff up is because of the things that they make you laugh at. And it is funny. They they make it in a, a joking way, but it is mocking. It is, it's uh, it's not right. And the same thing with what, his interview the other night. It was, it was not right. Deep down inside, the Spirit of God rises up and you know it's just not right. Well, here we have ISIS. ISIS is killing Christians right now. The Holocaust, it's starting. And you might say, well, that had never happened in America. Really? Huh. Don't kid yourself. Look at the changes America's gone through in the last 40 years. If somebody from 40 years ago, if you could have brought them to the future today, they wouldn't believe that that could have happened to America. That we didn't pray in school. That we killed 55 million babies that we allow homosexuals to marry each other oh my goodness but we get desensitized my good friend he's a lawyer also he coined the phrase incrementisms it just starts out a little here a little there like sin and all of a sudden one day you wake up and you go how in the world did I get from there to here well that's what's happened with America uh, Hillary she comes out this week um, and says that the only way for a woman to have a right to choose is to really change Christianity. I mean, it's all coming against Christianity. And let me give you a scenario here. Uh, Supreme Court rules, same-sex marriage. Everybody's happy. Rainbows are flying. Um, it's just the happy old transgender, gay, lesbian. You know, they're accepted, everything. But hold on. Hold on, somebody's a hater. Matter of fact, there's some hater literature out there. Well, what kind of literature? What's it say? Well, it says, if a man lays with a man, it's an abomination to God. Here, somewhere else it says, if a man dresses like a woman, if a woman dresses like a man, it's a, an abomination to God. Oh, that needs to be outlawed. And anybody reading that stuff, folks, don't think that it's not set up right now laws are in place for something like that to go down and quicker than you know if there's ever been a time for for Christians to pray for God to try to intercede with what's going on and, and I tell you what I don't know if we've passed the point of no return or not I believe we have uh, I truly believe we have and I believe that the only way that Christians are going to survive what is coming and it's coming quick 
<clears throat> you better draw close to him, folks. That's all I got to say. Your name better be written in the Lamb's Book of Life. It's the only way to survive this thing. And you better be walking the walk because as they're walking in the front door, you might need to walk out the back door and leave a restroom in another city. Have been translated. Don't think God won't do it to save his people. He'll translate you as a as a bomb's going off from one city to another. It happens in small pieces now and then, but we're going to see things that will make the parting of the Red Sea look like kindergarten. And the people who draw close, that's what they're going to see, folks. Psalms 91, you better live it. Folks, I just want to say, there's a website called Countdown to Daniel's 70th Week. 70 is numeral, 70. The rest of it's all spelled out. Countdown to Daniel's 70th Week dot com. Sign up over there. You'll get just one email a day, but it tells you the he, he puts out two or three articles a day that are very pertinent to what's going on right now. This is Neil Russell, the author of Newton's Riddle. It's a wonderful website, and um, you know I, there, there's websites I go to, but sometimes I forget. But I I don't forget to check my emails every day. And so one nice thing he does is that he just sends a small reminder that, hey, I posted two or three of these articles, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, yeah, I need to go there and see those. And I'm never disappointed. I'm never disappointed. Okay, folks, draw close. We've got Jade Helm 15. Shmita is coming. We've got uh, the Jubilee year. The last Jubilee, the last Shemitah, September 23rd, September 13th, November 11th, 5doves.com. Go there, check it out. Signing off, Chuck Holler, YouTubers.